Good evening. Our worship service begins on page 309, and I ask that the congregation would please rise. Aside from the upcoming service times listed within the bulletin, I do not have any other specific uh, announcements. Are there any announcements from the gathered congregation? You can hear that extra echo tonight, but it's really cool. I love echoes. We gather together then, brothers and sisters, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening. Let your light scatter the darkness. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you called light into being, and you set lights in the sky to govern night and day, in a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. You led your people into freedom, 
and lighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful, and you love your whole creation. And with all your creatures, we give you glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. I prayer eyes before you as in the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Lord, I call to you, come to me quickly. Hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Watch before my mouth, O Lord, and guard the door I live. Let not my heart incline to any evil thing. Let me not be occupied wickedness with evil doers. But my eyes are turned to you, Lord God. In you I take refuge. Strip me not of my life. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. It was in the beginning, it's now and will be forever. Amen. My prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Be seated. We join together in singing hymn number 517. You may remain seated or rise as you are so inclined to do. Lord, keep us steadfast in your word. Curb those who by deceit or sword Kingdom from your Son And bring to naught all he has done Lord Jesus Christ, your power make known for you are Lord of lords alone. Defend your holy church that we may sing your praise eternally. O comforter of priceless worth, and peace and unity on earth. 
Support us in our final strife and lead us out of death to life. Our first lesson for this evening is from the New Testament book of Hebrews. I accidentally left it as an Old Testament book. No, the Scriptures have not changed. No, they did not in any way transition um, Hebrews to the Old Testament. Um, Nonetheless, we are going to hear from the book of Hebrews, chapter 6, beginning with the ninth verse. Even though we speak this, dear friends, we are confident of better things in our case, things that accompany salvation. God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. We want each of you to show this same diligence to the very end, in order to make your hope sure. We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. When God made his promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater for him to swear by, he swore by himself, saying, I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. And so after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. Men swear by someone greater than themselves, and the oath confirms what is said and puts an end to all argument, because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the heirs of what was promised. He confirmed it with an oath. God did this so that by two unchangeable things, in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of the hope offered to us may be greatly encouraged. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where Jesus, who went before us, has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of St. Paul to the Hebrews. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What's interesting about this lesson is that it reiterates to us the value and the truth of God's promises. That despite our particular interpretations, our ability to observe what we think is reality, or any other such human contrivance, we cannot possibly understand what God means when he asks us to be consistently truthful or true to our covenants with God. However, what we must understand is that while we cannot even grasp honoring our own words for all time, God nonetheless does just that. Even when we break with the covenant, God does not alter his promise. We have been promised. First, in the covenant with Abraham, many heirs to fill the world, but most importantly, with Jesus, life everlasting. God will not go back, nor change, nor flee from that promise. This brings us strength. The psalm for tonight comes from Psalm 18, verses 1 to 6. I love you, O Lord, my strength, O Lord, my stronghold, my crag and my haven. 
My God, my rock in whom I put my trust, my shield, the horn of my salvation and my refuge. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, and so shall I be saved from my enemies. The breakers of death rolled over me, and the torrents of oblivion made me afraid. The cords of Sheol entangled me, and the snares of death were set for me. I called upon the Lord in my distress and cried out to my God for help. From the heavens, the Lord heard my voice. My cry reached God's ears. This is a Psalm of David, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And again, an affirmation of the message from Hebrews. God has made with us a promise, and God does not ignore or change or go back in any way on that promise. God promised to be with us through his Son, Jesus Christ, through the power of his Holy Spirit, and no matter when, how loud, or why we cry, God hears our cries, and God will answer The lesson for tonight um, from the readings of the ancient church fathers comes from perhaps the most famous church father of all, St. Augustine. Why is St. Augustine important? Well, first of all, he lived a very long time ago, and his word remains powerful to this day. That usually signifies someone that has something important to say. The other neat thing about St. Augustine is that Martin Luther relied on his teachings heavily, not only in his life and ministry, but also in his teaching and in his writing on reforms of the church. And so St. Augustine, born in 354 AD in the town of Thagaste, a Berber town, a North African town, St. Augustine was of Berber ancestry. He was an African Christian. It's important that we know that because sometimes we forget that a lot of the early church, and truthfully, it all started in Asia, in the Middle East, but a lot of the earliest teachings took place in the continent of Africa, in that part of the world that is today Well, a whole different place, but where it began in many ways. He was empowered by the teaching of St. Ambrose of Milan and converted back to Christianity, being baptized in 387 AD. He became Bishop of Hippo, a town in what's modern-day Tunisia, spent 34 years looking after his flock, And in that time, wrote an enormous amount. One of his teachings we read tonight. From his writing on the commentary of Psalm 85. God could give no greater gift to men than to make his word, through whom he created all things, their head and to join them to him as his members so that the word might be both son of God and son of man, one God with the Father and one man with all men. The result is that when we speak with God in prayer, we do not separate the son from him. And when the body of the son prays, it does not separate its head from itself. It is the one savior of his body, Our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who prays for us and in us, and is himself the object of our prayers. He prays for all of us as priest, and as our priest. He prays in us as our head. He is the object of our prayers as our God. Let us then recognize both our voice in his and his voice in ours. When something is said, especially in prophecy, about the Lord Jesus Christ that seems to belong to a condition of lowliness, unworthy of God, 
We must not hesitate to ascribe this condition to one who did not hesitate to unite himself with us. Every creature is his servant, for it was through him that every creature came to be. We contemplate his glory and divinity when we listen to these words. John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made. Here we gaze on the divinity of the Son of God, something supremely great and surpassing all the greatness of his creatures. Yet in other parts of Scripture, we hear him as one sighing, praying, giving praise, and thanks. We hesitate to attribute these words to him because our minds are slow to come down to his humble level when we have just been contemplating him in his divinity. It was as though we were doing him an injustice in acknowledging in a man the words of one with whom we spoke when we prayed to God. We are usually at a loss and try to change the meaning Yet our minds find nothing in Scripture that does not go back to Him, nothing that will allow us to stray from Him. Our thoughts must then be awakened to keep their vigil of faith. We must realize that the one whom we were contemplating a short time before in His nature as God took to Himself the nature of a servant. He was made in the likeness of mankind and found to be a man like others. He humbled himself by being obedient even to accepting death. As he hung on the cross, he made the psalmist's words his own. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? We pray to him as God. He prays for us as a servant. In the first case, he is the creator. In the second, he is the creature. Himself unchanged, he took to himself our created nature in order to change it and made us one person with himself, head and body. We pray then to him, through him, in him, and we speak along with him and he along with us. Sometimes it's easier to hear what individuals are saying by having it read Sometimes it's easier to understand what they're saying by reading it yourself. If anybody would like to read on St. Augustine, I have many resources. But what Augustine is lifting up here, written in the early days of the church, was meant to clear up confusion. It doesn't seem possible. And yet the very creator of everything chose to create his son, or not create his son, but make his son fully human as well. Not only is Jesus fully God, Jesus is also fully human. Now just imagine that. We, we have a hard time imagining that the creator is also the servant. We have a hard time believing that the all-powerful God also dies on the cross. That the unchangeable, omniscient, all-knowing, all-powerful God above dies and goes to hell for us. It doesn't make any sense. But it's nonetheless true. It's exactly what we see. Our God, willing to sacrifice His only begotten Son, And our Lord Jesus Christ willing to sacrifice himself as fully God and fully human to sacrifice it all for our lowly estate. No, we don't like to suggest that Jesus has any kind of perceived weakness. We don't like to admit that Jesus cried like we cry, hurt like we hurt, suffered like we suffered. Somehow it makes him less than God in our Well, our small minds. And yet it's exactly what God through Jesus Christ did for us. He became us. He became the created in order that we might be set free. The final lesson for this evening comes from the Gospel of St. John. 
and it comes from the eighth chapter, beginning with the 31st verse. Please rise as you are able for the reading of tonight's holy and everlasting gospel message. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Now Jesus replied to them, I tell you the truth, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know you are Abraham's descendants, yet you are ready to kill me because you have no room for my word. I am telling you what I have seen in the Father's presence, and you do what you have heard from your father. Abraham is our father, they answered. If you were Abraham's children, said Jesus, then you would do the things Abraham did. As it is, you are determined to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do such things. You are doing the things your own father does. We are not illegitimate children, they protested. The only father we have is God himself. This is the gospel of our Lord and our risen Savior, Jesus the Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. And it concludes our message for this evening. Once more, a clarification of sorts to those that would challenge Jesus, that as the Son of the only begotten Father, it is with Him, it is with Him that our freedom remains, that if the Son tells us we are free, we are free indeed. And he promises us the truth and nothing but the truth. So help him him. He promises us nothing but the truth. And if our father, Abraham, followed the word of the Lord, then we follow the word of the Lord, then we hear the word of the Lord, and we know it's true. And we know what is true in him is everlasting life, salvation from God, through God, by God by Jesus Christ our Lord, set free once and for all. Let us join together now, turning to page 314 for the Gospel Canticle. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. of the Lord. My 
Spirit rejoices in God my Savior. You have mercy on those who fear you. My spirit rejoices in creation. soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. For the health of the creation, for abundant harvests that all may share, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. For public servants, the government, and those who protect us, for those who work to bring peace, justice, healing, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. For those who travel, for those who are sick and suffering, and for those who are in captivity, let us pray to the Lord. For deliverance in the time of affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. For our presiding bishop, Elizabeth, and for our bishop, DeForest, all servants of the church, for this assembly, and for all people who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. giving thanks for all who have gone before us and are at rest, 
rejoicing in the communion of St. McCartan and St. Augustine, all the saints, we commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to you, through Christ our Lord. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God forever. Amen. Joining together, let us pray using the words that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
Let us go forth this night in peace to love and to serve the Lord and to love and serve one another. Thanks be to God.